Today we're going to talk about one of the measures of relative position, in this case specifically z-score. When we talk about z-score, it's talking about how many standards of deviation is it above or below the mean. What that tells us is the standard of deviation is how much each score deviates from the mean, and this is going to give us a relative position as to how far it is away from that middle number, that mean number. Okay, So, this is z-score. The z-score is the number of standard of deviations that x, so x being the score or the piece of data that we're working with, is above or below the mean. How do we calculate this? Well, we're going to take our score, x, and we're going to subtract the mean, and we're going to put it over our standard of deviation. Well, it's important that we know that this is our data, and this would be the mean of the population and this would be standard deviation. Well this is actually a pretty simple formula if you know all the pieces and the sample one looks much the same. It's going to be x minus x bar over s where s is the standard deviation, x bar is the mean as well. That's z-score. So that's just a comparison to the, the standard deviation of how close it is to the mean. Okay, so let's do an actual example. Raul took two tests in chemistry. On the first test, he got a 72. But the mean score for the class was 65 with a standard deviation of 8. On the second test, he scored a 60 with a class average of 45 and a standard deviation of 12. In comparison to other students, did Raul do better on the first or the second test? when we're saying compared to the other students. We're talking about data as it relates. Now, immediately off the bat, we want to say, well, he got a 72. The mean score for the class was 65, standard deviation of 8. He got a 60, and the class average was 45 on the second one. I would be inclined to say that the 60 would be better because he had, um, you know, 15 above the average. But let's see what the z-score tells us, okay? Test number one. On test number one, we are remembering that this is going to be x minus x bar over standard deviation. Okay, so we are going to take his score, 72, minus the class average of 65, and we're going to put that over the standard deviation. Okay, when we do this, we get 7 over 8, which is 0.875. That means it was 0.875 standard deviations above the mean. Test number 2. He scored a 60. So this is his score, 60 minus 45 over standard deviation of 12. So this is going to be 15 over 12, which is 1. 0.25. So what does this mean? Interpretation of the data is what's really important. When we find that z-score, we're saying it was 1.25 standard, standard deviations above the mean. That means everybody else, when we calculate their scores together, this is the mean. Well, he went above and beyond that by 1.25. The other ones, he was only above it by 0.875. So this means that the second is better, like we suspected, but almost, you know, we need to do this calculation because we can't always compare those things. This is saying how many of those standard deviations is he above the mean. He's over one standard deviation above the mean in his second test. This next example is one for you. Kind of the same, the same gist having to do with quizzes this time in history, okay? So go ahead and try this one. We will talk about this one in class, okay? In the next example we're going to be finding missing information. In all of your previous classes to this, and in all your subsequent classes, you will have problems where they'll give you the answer and they'll say you need to find what it is that we started with. So that's what we're going to do. 100 light bulbs were tested. The mean life of the bulbs was 842 hours. If the standard of deviation was 90 
and one light bulb had a z-score of 1.2, what is the lifespan of that bulb? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to set up the equation and fill in everything we know. The z-score equals 1.2. Well, we know that that's really equal to the life of that bulb, which we don't know, minus the mean, 842, divided by the standard deviation, which is 90. Okay? So look at what we have here. We have an x, and we have a bunch of other numbers. So what I need to do is I need to solve. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 90 to start with. And I get 108 is equal to x minus 842, because these go away. 90 times 1.2 is 108. Well, when I add 842, I will be able to solve for x. So this is basic algebra. We just need to know how to set up the equation. So x equals, and this is going to be 950. Well, what is 950? 950 is the lifespan of the bulb. Okay, so the mean was 842, and it was 950 for this bulb, so it was 1.2 standard deviations above the mean. Okay, good stuff. Here's an example for you to do. If a test score was of 70 on a test with a mean of 65.5, z-score was 0 0.06, what was the standard deviation? You go ahead and try that one, figure that out, and we'll talk about it in class tomorrow. All right, guys, that's z-score. We'll see you next time.